Uh, all right. Doing pretty good on time. I'd say let's do like seven, eight minutes of fun uh, fun headlines and let you pick which ones you want to elaborate on. This is always my favorite part. I'm going to make this tough sure. on you. I'm going to give you all the good running back headlines, and you tell me which one. I already know which one I'm going to pick. You want to take my help. All right. We got Bolt Piercer, Damian Pierce torching the Chargers. Sanders season, almost 30 points out of Miles Sanders. Chubb cements his status as the overall RB1. And Josh Jacobs gaining ground. 32-point day out of Josh Jacobs. Damian Pierce, Miles Sanders, Nick Chubb, Josh Jacobs, all with great days. Who do you want to talk about? I'm going to take an L on Damian Pierce. I think it's fair to take the L okay. here. It's It could be argued that maybe it's a little bit early because most of this was on the back of a long touchdown run that was blocked very well. Uh, he did show some some good long speed on that run, which was not his game, at least that we didn't think that it was part of his game. I'll say that uh, props to Brandon Cooks for running with him down the sideline because he got just in the way of the last defender just enough that I think was the only person who might have been able to touch Damon Pierce on the way. Um, but the big thing here was that he got six targets in this game, and that's like not something we were expecting at all, at least not at this point. He's a good, he's a really good pass blocker, so we thought maybe over time he could take some of those third downs from Rex Burkhead, but for him to get six targets in this game means a lot, right? And if he's just getting, you know, what, 70 to 80% opportunity share for, for the backfield, he was worth the cost, right? He was getting up to, what, like round five in drafts, uh, you know, as the season got close. And I was saying, like, that's way too high for this person, like, uh, for this player. Rex Burkhead's still going to play on third downs. We don't expect this offense to be good enough to want the running back. Like, that's way too high. But if Damian Pierce is just like that dude and gets in on third downs, I was very wrong. Let's go, Kelsey. It was a good day, man. A lot from the one play, but even without the one play, it was a really good day. Right. Uh, I don't have a ton to say on the rest of these guys, so just a couple quick hits, and then I want to give you the rest of the topics. I think there's something to be said about keeping some eyes on Josh Jacobs right now. Eight points, then nine, then 12, now 32. And it's not just that he exploded Involved in the passing game. Points. Yeah, it's the six targets that mean a lot for me today. I remember the very first week when we were talking about Saquon and how it looked like Saquon was going to be an RB1 after one game. He had six targets that day and he caught five of them. And it was very similar to what the stat line was for Jacobs. And like, that's my magic number. Like five targets for running backs that are not your pass catchers means a lot to me like Derrick Henry yeah. got like six targets today and that has happened a few times this year and I think that's a lot of the reason why Henry has looked as good as he has but I'm definitely keeping my eye on Josh Jacobs as a dude where if I am unhappy like I had mentioned earlier if I'm unhappy with the performance of someone like Austin Eckler and I really really buy into what you say that he had a great day today but he's still not going to get the close goal line work and he's going to have a lot more days like he's had the past three weeks I would be looking to see if I could get a really good two for one. And Josh Jacobs was kind of one of those guys that's on the radar for me. Miles Sanders in that same category. Starting to look like he's just going to be boom or bust. But sometimes, especially with the way running backs have looked this year, I'm happy to sign up for that. If yeah. every couple of weeks, Sanders is going to, maybe if every third week, I should say, Sanders is going to give me like 20 points. I'm in because I'm just watching Kamara either not play or give me five. I'm watching Eckler do yeah. exactly what Sanders is doing. I'm watching Najee kill my teams. Like Dalvin Cook has not given me that spike week yet. Like yeah. that's especially I, that's it's a cost of admission for Miles Sanders. You're happy with what you've right. gotten. Uh, and then, although I feel like you cannot trade for him just because of where he was taken, big shout out to Nick Chubb, man, who, if I'm not wrong, and I might be, because it's tough to keep all these numbers together, he might be actual RB1. I believe he was RB1 coming into the week. I have um, him at 15, 31, 17, and 20 which is really good for four games. And my thing with Nick Chubb is the reason why he has fallen down from what was a late first round pick to like a third round pick this year is because the narrative on Nick Chubb is that he can't be the RB1, that yeah. he's not involved enough. He doesn't get all the work and he doesn't get enough passing work to be the RB1. And now here we are with the Browns looking like a garbage two and two team. They could easily be 0 and 4 or 4 and 0. It's a mess. It's an anomaly. 
And Chubb is the only thing that is consistently working in the offense, and I'm really, really proud of him for that. Uh, update, he was the RB1 in half PPR coming into this week just ahead of Saquon Barkley. It's looking like, you know, them at the top. Again. And they probably would have flipped after this week. Well, no, because Barkley didn't score a touchdown, so 20 he, out of Chubb would keep him ahead. Uh, but he did have... Uh, Barkley did have himself a good day, though. So He did. He had like 150, 160 yards, but he won't have the 20 that Chubb had because of the touchdown. Um, yeah, but either yeah, way, he's looking correct. really good. Yeah. All right, man, let me give you a couple more headlines. Pick one of these. These are kind of the smaller headlines, but things that I think are probably just slightly on people's minds. We got Terry, as Jake Perry loves to call him, mid-Lauren. <laughs> Hall in on Brees Hall. Chief of tight ends, David Njoku, leaving streaming territory. Rashad Bateman, back-to-back -back letdowns, and Aaron Rodgers droppable. You know I have to talk about Aaron Rodgers because this is something that I've been beating the drum for uh, basically all offseason. I yeah. did not have him as a QB1 in my draft rankings. I had him as a streamer to begin with. It was and, like 13, but still, yeah. Yeah, uh, but that's this is this is why. It's because they're 3-1. And the, they won the last three games, and he hasn't scored more than 17 points. He has, his highest weekly total is 16.36 for fantasy points. Yeah. This is an issue. And the, and the issue is, is that he doesn't have a number one receiver. They're relying on the running backs. They're a slow offense. Like, Aaron Rodgers is playing well, but he just throws for like 230 yards and two touchdowns. And that's not enough. For a and that's one. all he's going to do. And I think that's a huge point that we have to emphasize a second time here is that throw out week one where he had like the four points because the Vikings game, it was clear that that was a mess and the team was not yeah. ready to go for week one. That's kind of becoming the Packers thing. But you now have 16, I'll round 16.4, 16.1, 16.1. Yeah. And that I guess that's just what it's going to be. And I thought like when you wrote this category in, I, I thought to myself for a little bit, like, you know what? I'm this week, I would have taken the shot on Daniel Jones because, like I told you this morning, I looked at all of the wide receivers who were out and thought, oh shit, Daniel Jones is going to run the ball a ton. Didn't expect yeah. him to have two touchdowns, but that rushing upside that he has in the right circumstances, and that's what we're talking about for streamers in the right circumstances, that rushing upside kind of puts him ahead of, I'm going to get 16 points out of Aaron Rodgers. The past couple of weeks, the way that the Falcons were playing, I'm going to take Mariota's rushing upside and hope for like something in the 20s rather than just taking 16 points yeah. at Rodgers. Which, crazy that I'm talking about guys like Geno Smith and Jared Goff being so far ahead of where Aaron Rodgers is that they're not even in the same conversation. And I'm going to take the rushing upside of Marcus Mariota over him. Coming into in this week, week four. he was QB 26 in four-point passing touchdown leagues. Jeez. And that's probably not going to be helped by the 16-point no. performance today. It's just kind of going to tread tread water and move everything in like the same direction um i don't know do i want to throw one more in before we go i kind of do because i just keep looking at some of the different ones here what do i like the most uh i think i'm going to throw a quick honorable mention at haul in on Brees hall because yeah. i like where we're headed with Brees hall as well and I guess in terms of what we like this show to be, which is examining things that you can't just see in the box score, big question that we had was, how is the Jets offense going to change when Zach Wilson comes back? Is Garrett Wilson going to disappear? Is Elijah Moore going to get better or disappear? Like, what, what are we going to see? And I think, like, the only person who clearly had the same role, but it got better, was Brees Hall. He got about double the work that Michael Carter got today in terms of opportunities. If you're looking at past... Uh, targets. If you put targets and rushing attempts together, he is almost exactly double the work that Michael Carter got. He turned that into 17 carries for 66 yards and a touchdown. Two catches for 12 yards, which is like, yeah, whatever. But six targets. Right. So 17 carries and six targets is really good, really, really good usage out of him. He seems to be on the field more and more, which is kind of what we were hoping. And this is just where I want to highlight for everybody real quick that a lot of the narrative on Brees Hall was demonstrate some patience because the Jets have a brutal early season schedule and you hit the second half where not only should he be more ingrained in the offense, but the schedule really starts to open up. And I'm already seeing him put up some pretty respectable numbers against what are good defenses that have the Jets in like not friendly game script. So I'm yeah. really hoping that we're looking at like these, like we could be seeing consistent 
20 point games out of Brees by the time we get to the end of the year. And that's really, really exciting news. And I, I want to reference a tweet from um, Dwayne McFarland, who, who, if you're not following yet, you absolutely yeah. should be on Twitter. One of the best in the business, in my opinion. But from week four, Brees Hall, he had 71% of the long down and distance snaps for the running backs, 100% of the short yardage, 100% inside the five yard line, 100% inside the 10 yard line. Like he is now officially like RB1 utilization going on. It's just a matter of how good it is the Jets offense. Basically, it means that when the Jets offense is not humming, he's still an RB2 because just based on usage. And if the offense is humming, he can be an RB1. Yeah. And that's kind of what I'm looking for the way that it has gone at the running back position this year. I'm sure the running back position is frustrating most of you as much as it is frustrating us, but 